analytics and see how the videos are doing or how the channels are doing and get uh, more detailed analytics from the YouTube. And on the enterprise content management side, we saw the content IP API, which you are actually claiming videos and you can actually changing monetization settings. So that was actually all I want to like show today. And I have still some time to get questions and give you some answers. And if just before going on that, I'll actually give, uh, uh, give you some uh, related uh, addresses. So our website is under youtube.com slash dev. We have an API block. We actually, uh, if you want to like uh, get calls and see all the different uh, new things that we are uh, doing, they are always on the block. API block at youtube.com. We have the Google Plus page or the Twitter account handles so that we are like whenever there's something new or something is changing on the API side, you will get like the fastest, the best relevant information from there. And all the open source uh, things, actually, all the open source code I like, uh, already showed, and all the other uh, different examples, the best samples for us, and the best use cases are already open source on the github.com slash YouTube. And our actually main developer side is developer.com, developer.google.com slash YouTube. So you'll get all the references and all the other actual YouTube APIs. You can read uh, more in detail. So that was all about me, and I'll have some time to ask and uh, get questions. Is there a volume cost that's associated with using these APIs? Uh, actually, the APIs are all free. There's no volume cost, but what we have is a quota. So uh, to not actually use, using like, uh, if you are, as long as you are using for the right reasons, and uh, for the, uh, uh, also like, with the terms of, uh, terms of service, that shouldn't really bother you, but there are like some quotas, uh, they are actually like short-term quotas for like for per minute, or daily quotas, either on the upload side or even getting like any other information. So if uh, enterprise want to use this service, Let's say they have maybe 100 products, and uh, can they match those products with your, uh, I believe, knowledge mapping? Uh, you you're asking about the enterprise claiming content part of the or the finding yeah. videos? No, it's not claiming. Let's say enterprise want to promote the product <coughs> through the YouTube channel, so mm. they want to upload all their videos into the YouTube, but at the same time they want to build that knowledge man, so anybody searches, it directly take them to that, that product. Yeah, I see. So, so the question was about, uh, if I understand correctly, that enterprise will upload videos and then they actually want all, all of their users will be easily able to find anything about that product. Right. So from the upload side, they can easily use the data API and upload all the videos, or they can be using the content ID to if you have like, uh, many different channels and uh, put over that. And after that, that actually all these videos, like since they are, as, as long as they are using the right descriptions, the right text, they will, like from the knowledge graph, they're able to automatically go all over this and will actually relate it. There is no way to actually suggest the knowledge graph, okay, just connect everything to here. Okay. But like they will find it and then through their own site or through their own app or anything, they can use Topics API and they can let search and find all this information from that or maybe other, any other videos that are uploaded in the same category. So how, how, how often the knowledge graph is getting built? Is it like so similar to the Google uh, search in there? You know? Yeah, exactly. So there is power from the same okay. engine. So they just keep like all the time. It's not like it. Can you put your last slide up, please? Sure. Was it this one or? Sure. Any other questions? Are, are there <coughs> copyright issues with leveraging like the topics API <coughs> on know, pulling videos that you don't have copyright to? Do you, do you know what I mean? Uh, actually, like, even for the topics API, if the videos are private or unlisted, you won't be able to find them anyway. On the private end, if you have, let's say, uh, corporate intranet content or something, and you'd like to use this as a platform, but you need to restrict access, mm -hmm. is, there a, is there a good way to do that? 
Uh, actually, uh, yeah, you can still do this through YouTube. That you can make it, uh, as I first already said, you can upload videos only available to you and only show to your own users. But for this, actually, YouTube is more like to share the content. So for that, we will suggest using the Google Drive for this one to upload the videos and still show them. But if you want to YouTube, YouTube is more like for sharing. You can still do for in YouTube, but we don't really suggest it. So I think that's all about it today, and thanks for coming. And I'll be out available. If you have any more questions, you can find me. Thank you. That was, a, that was a great talk. Thank you for coming. Um, I, I wanted to announce um, that we have a survey link here that's going to that's gonna help us kind of